It wasn't until I began working at a preschool that I stumbled upon my dream of being a mom. Not just any mom, but a stay-at-home mom. One that dropped off my little angel at baby preschool wearing trendy yoga pants and drove off in a fancy SUV. I looked at those moms with envy, intrigue, hope, and a touch of desperation. I daydreamed, journaled, and law of attraction about my dream of being that mom. The hubby and I bought a five bedroom home with plans to fill it up, each and every room with however many children God would give us. I got, I got pregnant. Oh, the plans I had for a beautiful active pregnancy. I would take daily strolls around Piedmont Park and go to prenatal yoga classes. People would say how cute I was and how all my weight was only in my belly. They'd call me basketball belly. But reality had other plans for me. I was sick, nauseous, and on the verge of hurling my entire pregnancy. Like until the day Ari was born, I took meds for all day sickness. But I was pregnant, and that was what I wanted. Only all of me was pregnant. My neck, my fingers, my nose, they were all pregnant. So there were my plans for a beautiful active pregnancy. In the meantime, between bouts of nausea, I happily planned our all natural home birth. We took classes, hired a lovely midwife, and had our blow up kiddie pool and everything. But guess what? Reality had other plans for me. At 35 weeks, I found out that Ari was breech, head up in the clouds. I went to the guru chiropractor who would surely flip our little dude. We prayed and took offense to anyone who suggested otherwise. Our faith was immovable. I did a number of inversions and tried lighting my toes on fire, AKA moxibustion, but reality had other plans for me. My water broke on my due date, and I had my little one via C-section. I was officially a stay-at-home mom. Me, I made it, and I was ready to enter that joyous, uncharted territory. But reality had other plans for me. A few weeks after getting my dream job as mom, I sensed a heavy, oppressive shift within myself. I clung to my baby like he was my oxygen. I was so emotional, but it was to be expected. After all, baby blues are totally normal. But for me, things only got worse. I'm a non-crier. Until that point, after six years, my husband had never seen me cry. My body would cry every single day. I say my body because at that point, I was a shell of a person. I was no longer myself. My body cried silently. It's different from sobbing. There's an unspoken desperation in silent cries. The tears poured from my eyes without a sound, and I could not stop them. I still daydream like before. Only now, I imagine what it would be like for Greg to return home and find me lifeless. Where would I put Ari to ensure he was safe until Greg got home? I'd have to time it just right so that my sweet Ari wouldn't be alone for too long. But in reality, I knew there was no way I could leave my baby. I can't do this anymore. Those five words spoken to my husband enabled us to seek help. I was diagnosed with postpartum depression. And after much resistance, I decided to accept what I hoped to be the magic pill that would fix it all. But reality had other plans for me. I began treatment as prescribed and immediately felt worse. I literally felt beside myself and was hearing things that weren't there. After two days, I was done with that so-called magic pill and endured an additional three months of suffering. At the end of my rope, feeling I had no other choice, I began meds again, successfully, at a lower dose. And after two long years, I took to my blog to declare that I beat postpartum depression. Now believe me, I could go on and tell you how reality continues till this day to have other plans for me, but I think you get the point. When we gaze upon that beautiful supermom that we aspire to be, know that chances are she is more super than you know. 
You don't know what facade she may be hiding behind or what her reality really is. We all have a reality that no one would wish for. The beauty is, despite the struggles and changes, despite the unexpected, I would not change my reality for the world. So take your reality, run with it, and be thankful for it. Our new plan is to stick with the one kid we've got, but only God knows what reality has in store for us. After all, plans are made to be broken.